Hi everyone, welcome to this Zugli community meetup featured with Sarah Karam. My name is Chris Fong. I fell into starting the Zugli community and ran it uh, since 2015 when I left Google. Sarah and I actually worked fairly closely, but my last job at Google, I was there from 06 to 2015. And there was a project Sandy team that worked with the Google Play team where um, Sarah's a uh, director there now, but uh, she's talking in a capacity that she'll share more about what she's doing now as well on, on the coaching side. But um, what we have is over 300 events a year, over 33,000 members, and we want to organize these meetups and education sessions for the community. If you ever have a topic you want to speak on or you want to share or you want to learn from, feel free to send us an email partner at zugla.co and we'll get that scheduled. Well, without further ado, um, Sarah and I uh, was meeting up uh, a couple of months ago now, I guess, in, in uh, Palo Alto, and we discussed how it would really be more useful to the Zugla community. And, a lot of you had shared with me in the past where if you've been impacted over a year ago, it's really hard to conjure up the questions and answer the questions people are asking in job interviews. And so before people are impacted, uh, before people forget too much about their experience, and I forgot so much of my own experiences back at Google, why don't we actually have Sarah walk you through a way for you to actually figure out perhaps what should your next job be? How do you prepare for it? And she's a great framework that she's going to be sharing uh, over the next hour. So. Um, Sarah, I'm going to turn over to you. Please do a quick introduction, and then uh, we'll get to your presentation. And uh, for those who didn't hear it, uh, we're going to stop the the recording at the at the uh, end of the presentation. And obviously, I'm sure Sarah will also make herself available for any direct Q and A in the future. So, Sarah, thank you for speaking to the Zugla community. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much, Chris, for having me. It's so wonderful to see um, some familiar faces, some new faces, and appreciate you all taking the time to be here. I'm very excited for this conversation and absolutely want to make it useful and dynamic. So um, drop questions into the chat. We'll also make sure to save plenty of time at the end for questions that will you know, not be recorded. So folks can ask any specific questions they want. So yeah, like Chris mentioned, this came about when we were meeting and um, noticing that whether through um, job eliminations or otherwise, I think somebody, I think Sam, you mentioned like, you're still at Google. It's not, this is not content intended necessarily for those who've been eliminated. It, but it is uh, to help with that challenge that I've heard a lot in my coaching work, which I'll talk about, is um, that it can be difficult to translate your Google accomplishments to others in other industries and in other um, companies. And it's especially harder as time goes on. So there's kind of a, a double problem that we identified and how can we help not just to um, do that you know, more broadly, but also help to keep that uh, momentum when you're at Google or shortly after as much as possible to to look back at your time and be able to translate the incredible work that you've done into a way that's relevant depending on the audience that, that you're talking to. So that's what we'll cover here. I'll go through and a lot of this content is really based on my experience as a as a, an executive coach, which I'll, I'll talk about. I'm going to go through slides. Please just like ping in the chat if you can't see what I'm what I'm uh, going through or if the slides uh, stop or anything, I'll rely on that. Um, so I've been at Google for 11 years. Um, I love working at Google. I've met so many incredible people, many of you on this call and continue to. Uh, and I, I really think it's a place where you can learn so many different skills. So in being able to translate those skills and the impact across the industry is really critical. And I think there's some, some watch outs, some things that, you know, stereotypes that people associate with Google, especially at certain companies that can be uh, navigated. And one of my passions that I've been investing in the past few years is coaching. Um, like many coaches, I had an incredible coach uh, several years ago at Google who was pretty life-changing. Um, she really kind of helped me rethink some limiting beliefs that I had, um, some polarity thinking that I was using. And it made me realize like, wow, this can be really powerful to have these types of conversations with, with, with people. I think coaching had a bad rep for many years of being for low performers, almost like a corrective approach. And I think in the last few years, there's been a huge growth in, in coaching for high performers with companies like Better Up and otherwise. So I'm really feel like it's a coaching moment um, right now, which is wonderful. And as a coach, especially the last year, I've been working with a lot more people who have struggled with this question, not just Zooglers, but from all industries. You know, what, what uh, if I've been impacted or if I'm looking for a new role, how do I go about that? What do I want? How do I position myself really well? Um, and how do I make sure I navigate that change effectively and love the work I do? That's that's really my sweet spot, what I love to coach through, because um, a lot of people who are going through change, it can be overwhelming. It can be, um, you know, it can lead to a bit of a binary thinking often of like, if I don't do this now, it's going to be gone forever. And I think um, having a coach to work through to make sure you're not limiting yourself through those moments can be really, really important. So that's a bit of uh, like, why am I talking to you about this? Uh, that's that's where I'm coming from. and. Why does this matter? You know, when, when Chris and I spoke about this, well, like, why did it come up as something that felt like it would be really meaningful? 
especially today, um, I think we tend to undersell and underestimate the importance of our work at Google and how innovative Google has been over the years in many technology waves, now, of course, in AI. Um, and it's a very highly valued uh, experience. And I think often Googlers, the culture is such, I'll just say this, but I know it's subjective, where humility is, is kind of used as a, a label to say, well, I'm just going to underestimate kind of the, the impact I have. There's kind of a culture of humility, which is, again, I, I will unpack what that means uh, throughout this, but, um, but it can mean that Googlers can tend to maybe underestimate and undersell the importance of the work they've done um, and how it might translate to other companies in different stages and different industries. So I think that's one main reason is the work you've done as Googlers is very important, is very valued, and you owe it to yourself um, to communicate that clearly. And it can be difficult in general to translate work across companies, across cultures, across um, stages, across individuals. That's not a Googler specific thing, but it's, it's definitely true in this day and age where uh, especially across industries, and it, it just it can be overwhelming to have to think about how do I talk about this work I did at this company at a startup, potentially a very early stage startup, and talk about it in the context of you know this very mature business. So we'll talk through that, but it, it does matter to do this effectively. So we'll cover five tip areas. Um, I'll go through each of these with a few specific examples. And like I said, I want this to be um, dynamic, engaging, useful. So just drop in the chat if you have a question. I'll either get to it live or we can we can do it at the end. Um, please don't be shy to share your experience or your specific questions. So first and foremost, and this is pretty important as a foundational uh, piece of work to do for yourself. Like I mentioned, yeah, many honey. people I work with in my yeah. practice, uh, they tend to um, they tend to not really know what they want, or they they come from a place of I want to be successful or I, I want to get, I want to work in this industry. And when you unpack an, uh, uh, that onion or, uh, you know, remove the layers of that onion, um, it, it can it cannot lead to a very clear, um, oh, thank you, Chris. It cannot lead to a very clear answer on like, what are your priorities? What are you optimizing for? And this is the most critical grounding work that you can do before you start translating your work and being able to communicate your work. What do you want? What are you looking for and why? This is not a five minute exercise, and I hope many of you have already got a sense of this and have done your own soul searching on what are your priorities starting there, and I, as much as you can stack ranking them. Um, I know it's not, hard, not easy to do, um, especially if you tend to have priorities in different um, layers of your life. Potentially you've got some uh, family priorities of how you wanna spend your, your time and your hour flexibility. You've got some maybe learning goals, and those are all very valid, and I would urge you as much as possible to try to stack rank them even though they're very different elements of your life. But this is really critical to start with, what am I, what do I want? Um, stack rank that and really, really ask yourself if that um, is, is looking evident in the work you've done in the past. Like if there's an, if there's a story to why you're, you're stack ranking your priorities in that way um, and, and make sure you're not too, I guess, like if everything is a P0, there's, there's something wrong there or there's something amiss and to really investigate uh, soul search as much, as much as possible. Equally important, identify your absolute deal breakers. So if you're interviewing at a company or you're looking to join a specific company and for example, they require nonstop travel, you're gonna travel four weeks out of every eight weeks and you know that's an absolute blocker. You might have some family reasons. Do not convince yourself that like that is gonna work for you um, because you're negotiating with yourself at that point. If you know it's not gonna work for you, then make sure you know your boundaries and stick to them. Um, now you, I have a third thing here that you can adapt, but that, that you should not be negotiating with yourself. Um, if you have zero inflexible points or, or zero deal breakers, that could be a red flag that maybe you're not setting your own sense of boundaries, um, but really make sure you're thinking deeply about before you start thinking about your accomplishments at Google, what you're looking for in a new job or, or in a discussion, um, when and if you're ready for that, that you know what you want, um, what you don't want, and then what you're, what you're willing to be flexible for. This is a really critical step, and I'll talk through this a bit later. But you know, if you're having, if you're struggling with this step, it's a good thing to work with a, a, a partner, with a spouse, to go through each of these, um, to you know, really deeply investigate. Um, if you feel like you're at a at a at a, a point of stickiness where you just don't know how to move forward, but the amount of coaching clients I've worked with where this is actually something that they haven't done yet, and they're already looking at jobs, they're already interviewing, um, it often leads to problems later on where they, they kind of don't know how to navigate a major choice. They don't know what their, what their list of priorities are and it can result in a lot of frankly wasted time. So 
highly recommend you start here um, and that you have your own short list. This, this could all be done in kind of a one pager, um, things you want to avoid and then things that you're, you're open um, to be adaptable on. So once you have that, you have a sense of, of uh, your grounding, you know, where you are, what, what you want from your next role or your longer term career. There's a framework that I really like to use with clients that can help with any previous work. And this is a critical component for Zooglers who've been doing Google work, because I think someone said this um, in the intros. Sometimes Googlers use like their own little language of a lot of um, acronyms and a lot of Google internal words that are just not understood um, in, in the world outside. Uh, I can definitely um, you know, hear that sometimes when I talk internally or when I talk to clients, they're, you know, sometimes I'll mention something and they say, what? Like, what does it exactly mean? Um, so Starting with um, taking a big step back before you go through the STAR framework, which I'll talk through, and just have a sense of your value. It doesn't matter what your role is. This is not about, am I a product manager or a business development manager? Those are, those are helpful, but they're labels. Like, what is it that you're going to bring to the next um, team that you operate in, the next business that you want to support? Um, just kind of summarizing, what is it that you bring? And just that's kind of your punchline, right? Like more of a just summary of you, a brief bio. If that's a hard thing to do for you, which it is, and, it, and to be fair, it should be, this should not be super easy unless you've already spent a lot of time on it. Start with your STAR framework. Um, and this is where you look back at your accomplishments at Google, wherever else you wanna talk about in this framework and start with a situation. So that would be potentially a context for a challenge or an opportunity that you had on the team that your, that your um, business had the task that you did, so the, the actual responsibilities that you went through, that does not need to be alone, especially if you're a leader or a manager, that, that really should involve others, not, not all you. The action, so what did you do? What, what were the steps you took to address um, the, the situation itself? And highlighting what you brought to that. What were the skills? How did you navigate challenges, et cetera? And then the result. This is really critical, and this is where really putting things in context, trying to avoid um, you know, Googler terms and things that are not easily translated, things that, that you, you have a sense of, you know, that will kind of be um, understood by, by the layperson. And this is where you really need to stress test this with um, uh, people who don't work at Google, with friends, with family, being able to talk in plain English about the result that you achieved. So taking this STAR framework, the situation, task, action, and result framework to everything you've done and summarizing, I'd say minimum of five examples that you'll then be able to use in so many questions and so many situations. And we'll talk through some examples of that, but these, these do not need to be everything you've done. Your goal is not to write a life history and a life story of your time at Google. It's to pick out the five plus really strong examples of what indicates your unique strengths, your accomplishments, what you're gonna bring to the next company you work at, you know, the next team that you wanna impact. So this is a really critical step to helping you translate because if you use the STAR framework, you're forced to contextualize. You're forced to, again, speak in plain English. Um, and you know, I'll talk about this more in a little bit, but it really is important that this can be understood by anyone, um, especially those in the audiences that you're targeting and not be a Googler only. You, know, you don't need a dictionary to, to read this and, and have a better sense of what you're, what you're targeting. So this does take a bit of effort and time. Um, I actually recommend to clients, they do this at least once a year, ideally once a quarter if they can, just all the time that, you know, again, like this is not just about when you're looking for a job or when you're impacted, your role is impacted. This is just good health um, in, in terms of looking back on your year, on your time. What have you done and why? Why are you proud of it? Why, like, why is it something you want to remember? So um, highly recommend the STAR framework, uh, something I use with my clients, something I use with myself and find it incredibly um, effective in summarizing the value that you bring. And then I'll just share this quote from Susan Cain, who I love. She, she wrote um, the book, um, uh, Introverts, like the power of introverts. And she also wrote a book called Bittersweet. And I think this is really important. You know, research has shown that um, especially women, people of color, and, um, you know, I'm going to add like people who were raised by immigrants, <laughs> like tend to have a really uh, harsh view of their work and really struggle to talk about their work with any positive tone and have so many qualifiers in everything they say about themselves. It kind of sounds as if they, they think their work is terrible, the way, the way they're describing it. And, um, and, it, and it really makes a difference, right? Like you could do incredible work, but if you, sh if you just shed some dark on it, 
or some gray on everything you're doing, it just doesn't pop. And, and it doesn't, you know, the work could have been incredible, but if you're really not telling a good story, unfortunately it doesn't, I don't, I really, I used to believe that if you just do great work, think good things will happen. I don't think that's true at all. <laughs> now that I'm a little further along in my, in my life and my career, uh, I think that usually you have sponsors who are helping you in the background. If you're not doing the shining the light, but if you can shine the light on your work and the work of those around you, you're going to be 10 times more effective <laughs> and getting kind of getting to where you want to go, being able to tell a really good story, especially if you're a leader. If you can't tell a good story about your work, you're not going to tell a great story about other people's work. So I, I do think this is something really, really critical um, to learn. And it's not the case that you're bragging just because you're telling a good story about your work. So um, we talked about grounding yourself, about knowing yourself and being able to tell a really good story about yourself. Now that's all really important. That's not the entire equation. Um, just because you do those two things will not help you translate your work as effectively as possible. So if you take away one thing from, from this presentation, I'd say, uh, including the STAR framework, this is a really critical piece as well to know your audience and really unpack what is similar and what is different about the audience that you're communicating to versus a Google audience. Again, if this is specifically for Googler, for Zooglers, um, Google has some core components of its, of its company reality, of its company culture. Some of those are factual, right? Number of people when you were working there, um, the stage of, of the company in terms of um, user base and the types of users. Some of these are subjective. Um, the company culture, and that will differ slightly. You know, Chris mentioned we work together when we were at Google, and we we work closely. Our team cultures were even slightly different, um, not not very different, but slightly different. And I think that's the same across Google. Now, when you when you kind of summarize all these components of a company, you know, what's the culture like? What's the founder like? What's the what's the DNA of the founder that has you know per permeated into the company? Um, you start to get a, like a bit of a profile of the company. I know that there are plenty of websites out there that you can get this information. It's a lot harder for non-public companies. And I really urge you when you're thinking about the kind of company and the kind of role that you're looking to, to get, to apply for, to interview for, to think through the, the Venn diagram of what's similar and what's different. What I hear a lot as a coach and my clients often will come and say something like, um, you know, I've worked in big companies and I'm really eager to work for a startup. And I'm so excited. I want to move faster. I'm sick of decision making, you know, slowness. And I think a startup is the right place for me. And then we start unpacking that and we kind of think through, okay, well, so, so you want faster decision making. Is this startup you're applying to? Tell me about the decision making process. How do they make decisions? And often what's happening is people are equating a whole bunch of variables with, um, with the kind of the meme of, of the company that they're applying for without necessarily doing the diligence of like, well, what does it actually, you know, what is the actual way things work at this company. And you won't know all of that, again, for, for non-public companies, especially, and for companies where you might not know um, some of the former employees very well, but you will have an idea by the time you start going a little bit further down the, the you know, interview process, the application process. And what this can do, if you're able to position the company versus Google and anywhere else you've worked, you have, again, a better sense of translating the work you've done to a different environment. And that environment does not only mean size, it could mean founder culture. It could mean um, the style of the team, of the specific team and how decisions get made. So being able to translate is very important. I'm sure many of you have, have uh, faced the meme of, uh, you know, Zooglers and Google, they, you know, they, they're they so slow. It just takes forever. They won't know how to get things done at a startup. And being able to effectively preempt that, that feedback from a smaller company and be able to actually go a level deeper and show that you've done the research and how your work actually would translate. Where it might be different, but where it would be the same is really, really critical, can help you really mitigate that, that generalization that you might make or that others might make about just because you worked at Google X, Y, and Z is true. Um, and again, I would, not, I would try to avoid the meme that startups are all this and big companies are all that. It's, it's, as we all know, it's really not as simple as that um, and a lot more nuanced based on based on the reality. So really important to tailor your, your um, message to the audience. And one other thing I'll mention here, there's the company audience, you know, capital C, and there's the person you're talking to. So even better, if you can take the same approach, and if you're meeting with the chief business officer, you're gonna have potentially a different approach and a different way that that person thinks about success versus the chief product officer, et cetera, et cetera. So um, really being able to think about your audience and tailor accordingly can, can help a lot to make sure you 
you preempt and you know don't don't run into the stereotype bias. And that is a good segue into the knowing what you don't know. You're not going to know every single little one of these details. Even the previous slide, I know I mentioned like culture. A lot of clients I work with, they they run into this issue where they they're excited about the potential of a certain role. It looks really good on paper and they might have had an initial conversation and they really like that person, but they don't know the founder. They don't know if they're gonna be the kind of person who pings you at 2 a.m. saying like, oh, it's so urgent, I need you to come in with a coffee in the morning. Like you just, you just don't know those things. It's really, really hard um, to preempt even if you talk to others and that's okay. Um, but what can, what can help here is to write down the things that you don't know and just be honest about it with yourself. And as much as you can do some research on the things that matter to you. Going back to your grounding, you know what matters to you because you've, you've gone through that exercise already. You're able to prioritize that stack rank. And there might be things you don't know that are not important to you. And so you can kind of have them in a bucket of, well, like, well, I'll find out later. It's not a big deal. And there might be things you don't know that are important to you. And for those ones especially, it's very worth your time to do the research, to meet with former employees, current employees, as much as you can. I know it's obviously not, not always possible um, to seek sources, there's so much out there and we'll talk a bit about tools you can use here um, to seek mentors, people who may have a totally impartial view, um, but have, have you know, wise, wise questions to ask you to think through the unknowns um, to, and to communicate. I think there's one thing that I'm sure many of you out there who are or have been hiring managers um, can, can I've, I've certainly felt this way. I don't wanna speak for everybody, but where when you, when you ask what people's blind spots are or maybe areas where they made mistakes or they're just not, or you know you're asking about a topic that they don't have a lot of previous experience in, there's just nothing worse than when people just pretend like they know the answers to things that they clearly don't, um, or that is definitely a blind spot for them, or they can't admit that they have blind spots. So in the same way, uh, the same meme that telling your story is bragging, which is you know a deep polarity that is incorrect, um, pretending like you know everything is also, you know, really not very helpful and, and can be very off-putting for a hiring manager. So definitely know, kind of again, list as much as you can, the areas of growth for yourself, both factual and behavior. You know, there might be areas of the business that you're entering for you don't know as well, that's fine. And I'm sure you, you're, you'll have all the appetite to do the, the, the legwork there. Um, but there are also going to be behaviors that you can that you're able to communicate to a hiring manager that they're just not, they're not your strongest suit. You have areas for growth. And you're working on it, but they're not, you know, knowing what those are is a very critical step um, as, a, as an interviewee. And one thing that um, we talk a lot about in coaching conversations is having a learning mindset versus the knowing mindset. Uh, that can really go a long way, especially in this day and age with the pace of change in technology, really being able to communicate through your STAR framework, through your what you don't know, that you're, you have examples of where you've been a learner in your past um, and where you've you've risen to that challenge versus I'm here to answer your questions perfectly 10 out of 10 and that's my job. That's again, not gonna um, not gonna present you in kind of the way that, um, that can help you adapt in a new role. So know what you don't know. And then back to um, the challenges of being able to do all this in a vacuum for yourself, tell a great story using your STAR framework, um, be able to communicate that really effectively depending on the audience and tailor it perfectly um, and then being able to you know list out all the things you don't know like doing this in a vacuum you're you're destined to struggle and to probably get it wrong make sure you're learning on this group I love that this community exists and it's just a wonderful wonderful resource of people who have common opportunities and challenges and can help um, with this with this area um, ideally, people who are just very different or, or have in a very different industry as well can be a really good um, area of peer feedback to give you um, to give you insight and and you know practice effectively. You know, doing mock interviews, doing mock discussions around your story, your branding, your 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 accomplishments. So, really urge you all to do this. You know, even and I'll go through some Gen AI tools. There are so many so many ways you can do this without at you know one in the morning if that's your style and you, you don't have uh, the the accessibility to call someone up at that moment there are tools you can use and get some some gen ai feedback on what you're what you're doing well what needs to be translated differently um, and there are so many so many ways out there where you can actually do this as a group uh, whether it's group coaching whether it's groups like this like highly encourage you to not not do it alone. Um, you're 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 either not going to make as much progress and, and do it as effectively, um, or you're going to miss again total blind spots of of where you could be learning. So, 
highly recommend to do this collect collaboratively. The fact that you're all here means you're already doing that. Um, and so, you know, great, great to see, um, but make sure you're, you're leveraging the community around you. So you'll, you'll definitely learn something as I do every day. Um, now I will flag, there are some really excellent tools to help here with the big caveat, all of them can get it wrong and are not perfect, of course, but they are helpful. And I've actually uh, worked with a couple of clients recently who've told me a couple of these specific tools they've used to positive results. Um, I'm not gonna plug you know, Google tools specifically here or, or any specific company. So use your, your LLM of choice, um, but it's really a good exercise and it, it's worth your time to post or rather paste the job description of a role that's interesting to you into um, the, the LLM and actually get specific answers to like some prompts. For example, what questions might the interviewee ask me? Or the person I'm talking to has this many years of experience in X, Y, and Z, and you can put their LinkedIn profile in and like here, what, what, what might be some, some areas of interest for them? So there's really like an, an endless list of useful prompts that you could, that you could ask an LLM to help you. I've tried a bunch of them uh, and I'll share some of the questions that, that came out, but there, and none of them are, are you know, absolutely, um, you know, flawless, but, but they do help hopefully get your, your juices going a little bit on what might come up, what blind spots that you're not thinking about that could come, in, come up in a discussion. Similarly, when you've written out your star accomplishments using an LLM to get feedback on, does this make sense? Is anything missing? I highly recommend pairing that with human um, feedback because you know obviously the LLM is is only as good as the training data, but but it but it is another tool out there. And again, it's a great one AM tool. Um, I'm not sure that's not the time I usually do things by the way, <laughs> so I'm not sure if that's a healthy time for everybody. But a time when you might not have uh, access to to a human to ask. Um, similarly, and this is really important for for those of you who really prefer um, the the live. Uh, practice. So versus like, you know, typing it all out and being very uh, written communication prepared, being able to live practice talking through your answers. I've listed a couple of um, tools out here. Udly is one that one of my clients used and she found a lot of value in it. These are all interview prep tools. They're not free. Um, so, you know, it's a worthwhile thing to invest a little bit in and cancel. Most of them are subscriptions models. Um, but they're all tools where you, the, the model is very much that you, you speak, um, you kind of share your answers and it will give you feedback, written feedback on what, what was uh, compelling, where maybe you stumbled, where it didn't really make sense, um, the tone of your voice. So very specific feedback. Um, but again, it can, it can, it can mock uh, a human giving you that feedback and it can be done anytime um, without having to schedule or work with somebody directly. So there are so many great tools out there. I haven't, this is just a, a, a smattering. There, there are many, many, many more. So uh, if you're interested, there's just a, a bevy of ways you can, you can up your game. Most of these tools are free, I should say, but the interview tools are, are uh, tend to be paid. And back to LLM. So I've listed out here, some of these are from my own um, coaching experience and as a hiring manager myself, and some of these are from um, Gemini. And there are some really common questions that you'll get asked. I'm sure those of you who've interviewed recently can attest to this, that even the companies that claim to be the best in the world at interviewing and claim that they've got a really custom approach, there are still some very repetitive questions, maybe with different wording or different framing, but they, they tend to be the same. Um, and highly recommend that back to the STAR framework, when you're summarizing your accomplishments, you actually first look at these questions or other, you can you know, use your own uh, LLM process to upload the job description that you're maybe the one that, if, if there's one that you're most interested in and then customizing the questions based on that because it might look a little different. Uh, for example, based on whether it's a manager role or an IC role, the questions will differ. And just think through each star impact as if you were answering one of these questions. Typically the same answer can be morphed, right? To, to meet the demands of several different questions. But it does help to feel mentally prepared. That, like I'm going to get asked these sets of questions around how I manage conflict. That's such a common question, and it gets asked in you know 16 different flavors typically. Um, or for example, like how, you know how you've how you've navigated a conflict with a coworker, or how you've navigated conflict with a client, whatever it might be. And they have similar flavors. Um, and then similarly, if you're a manager, there's going to be a set of manager questions that you get asked. So as much as you can to be prepared, so you're not to totally caught off guard. 
uh, in my time as, as a coach, I found that like, it's pretty, um, pretty predictable what kinds of questions you're gonna get asked. Uh, and it doesn't differ as much even across industry. Um, so, so definitely make sure you're, you're, you're preparing yourself and as much as you can using tools, uh, LLMs to pre preempt, get as many questions out as you can. Um, and those tools are actually also very helpful for preparing your own interview questions so that you can feel confident in the questions that you're gonna ask. Uh, which are also incredibly important. So, so many great tools to help. So I'll recap the five tips. Again, I wanna be mindful and leave plenty of time for questions, especially um, if there are any specific ones that we, you know, we don't record. Uh, the first is ground yourself. That's your foundation. Know what you want, equally important what you don't want um, and where, where you're okay being flexible. The second is know thyself. Use your STAR framework to have a handy list of um, you know your accomplishments, your value that you're going to bring, and then you know really well well written um, uh, accomplishments that you can link back to results that are in plain English. Know your audience. This will look different every day and look different every month depending on what you're doing in the moment. But it's a it's a mindset you can bring to any conversation that you're having, whether it's an interview or even just a networking conversation. Do your research. Know who you're talking to. Um, know your gaps. You know, don't the same way you should not be shy about telling a great story. You should not be shy about saying what you don't know and where you're going to learn and having a learning mindset. And then lastly, learn from each other. Um, this is such an incredible community. Really uh, grateful to Chris for, for investing in it and for all of you for doing the same. And, you know, leverage it. Don't don't be alone. Don't don't feel like you have to do all of this by yourself. Um, be vulnerable as much as you can and share what, you know, your progress, maybe just do a little mock interview together and see where you can help each other grow and, and you know, share real feedback. Um, and with that, I will also, I'll open it up to Q&A first, um, and then I'll share maybe the, if anyone wants to continue the conversation or get in touch, how to do that. So with that, um, I, will, awesome. I will open it up. Thank you, um, yeah, Sarah, sure. for the presentation. This is awesome. What, before we stop the recording, would you mind sharing how people can get in touch with you and what's the best way and how you work with people perhaps? Yes, so um, I'm very happy to continue the conversation. Um, this is how you can get, get in touch with me, Sarah at anbara, A-N-B-A-R-A.com. I also link to my website here. I have a couple of articles to help, especially with the first tip, grounding yourself. I have some resources there too, if it's helpful, like how do you know what you want, what you're good at, um, that can be really hard. So I have kind of a three-part journey to help with that. Um, so, you know, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to just do like a 30 minute conversation. You don't have to, you know, I have a, a Calendly on my, on my website. If you ever, any of you want to have one-on-one -on -one conversations. Great. Um, thank you, Sarah, for giving the Zubu community a taste of how you help uh, some of the amazing people that you've been able to coach over the past few years. We're very busy with your day job, your family, as well as your night job. And I've always enjoyed working with you. And so, so glad you were able to speak to the Zuber community today. Um, with that, we'll stop the recording so we can have more private conversations with everyone else. <laughs>